In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to prove the derivative formulas for the power rule, product rule, and also the quotient rule under the assumption that we have the logarithm derivative and also the chain rule, all right? So the first one I'm going to show you is, let's differentiate x to a power. And I write down r right here. r can be any real numbers, all right? And this is how I will show you. I will figure out the answer right here. And this is the approach if you want to use the logarithmic derivative, all right? So, first of all, I will just say let y, I'll just really just write down let y equal to the function that we're talking about, namely x to the r power. And I will just go ahead and take the natural log on both sides, all right? So I'll put on ln of this, ln of that. And then we'll see, on the left-hand side, we have the natural log of y, and then on the right-hand side, this is ln of x to the r power. And as we know, by one of the ln property, this power, we can take that to the front, right? And this has nothing to do with the power rule at the moment. From here to there, we have r times ln x. This right here is just the ln property. So you don't minus one, you don't do anything like that. This is just a basic algebra, right? And now, this is the equation that we have ln y is equal to a number r times ln x. Here, we can take the derivative, but the y is not isolated. So let's go ahead and use implicit differentiation. You can also do e to this power, e to that power to isolate the y, but you know I want to just use implicit differentiation from here. So let's put down d dx, all right? On the left-hand side, remember, we said that we know how to differentiate ln something, right? You can check out the video if you would like, it's in the description. And also we have to rely on the fact that we have the chain rule as well. Anyway, differentiating ln y, we first get 1 over the inside, which is y. But we know y is a function of x. And the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of y. Namely, that's the dy dx. That's how we squeeze out the dy dx, okay? And that's it for the left-hand side. And now, on the right-hand side, remember, r is just a number. It can be like 5 or whatever. You write it down, right? A constant multiple of a function, you can first put on the constant multiple first. And then you focus on differentiating the ln x. The derivative of ln x in the x world is what? Just 1 over x, like that, isn't it? And as you can see, we finished with the derivative. Now what? Well, this is 1 over y. I want to get rid of that on the left-hand side. So let's multiply y on both sides. How's that? I'll put that right here. I'll also put that right here, OK? So that this and that will cancel. And now we have dy dx. And this will be r is still r. 1 over x is still 1 over x. And then y, well, I don't want to put on y because we know y much better. y was x to the r power. So we can just put this down, x to the r power, all right? And now what? Well, as we can see, this is, let me just put it down. r is what we have here. But we have 1 over x. This is the x to the first power. And then this is, r, this is x to the r power. And of course, by the rule of exponents, we can just do x. And then you do this power minus that power, namely r minus 1, isn't it? And there we have it. Whenever we're trying to differentiate x to a power, we first bring the power to the front, so we have the r. And then don't forget, we minus 1 from the exponent. So we have r times x to the r minus 1. This right here is that power rule formula, everybody's favorite derivative question. And now let's check out the product rule. Okay, now we're going to differentiate the product of two functions. Namely, I will just write down as f of x times g of x. And just like earlier, our first step is to let y equal to this times that. And we know already f and g are functions of x. And for simplicity purpose, let me just write down f times g like that without the parentheses x, like this and that, right? So once we have y is equal to f times g, they are all functions of x. What do we do next? 
I don't want to differentiate this yet. I want to take the natural log on both sides first, right? So right here, let's put down ln of this and then ln of that. On the left hand side, we still have the ln of y. And on the right hand side, we know the ln of a product is a sum of the ln. Namely, we can write this as ln of f plus ln of g, right? And from here, we will differentiate the equation implicitly. So I'll put down d, dx all the way like this. On the left-hand side, it's the same speech that we had earlier. The derivative of ln y, we first get 1 over y, and then, because y is a function of x as well, by the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dx, right? And we'll do this another time, so you'll really understand what's going on right here. But then on the right-hand side, let's see what do we have. Differentiating ln f, well, it's similar to that. We first put down 1 over f, but f is a function of x as well. So we have to multiply by the derivative of f with respect to x. And in notation, I will just put down f prime, all right? And next, we will add the derivative of ln g, which is going to be 1 over g, times the derivative of g, which is g prime, like that. And now that's what we have. And then the next move is, we will just multiply both sides by y, so that this and that will be cancelled here. And I'll multiply the y right here entirely like this, right? This is the product of all that. Now we have this, dy dx, that's what we're trying to find. This is equal to y, which is what? y is equal to f times g. So let's put this down right here. And we multiply this by whatever we have inside. This is f prime over f plus the next one is g prime over g. And we have something in front, so what do we do? Of course, take this, distribute, distribute. At the end, we see that dy dx, this is equal to, when you take this times that, the f cancel out. So now we will just have f prime times g, and let's write that down right here, all right? And then next, we will add this times that, the g's will cancel out, and let me just put down f times g prime, like this. And this is the product rule formula, right? And in fact, we have two ways to write this. We can write this term first, just like how this is, or we can write this term first, f times g prime, and then plus g times f prime, all right? So it's kind of like up to you. And anyway, because I have this right here already, let me just put this down for this right here. So the derivative of f of x times g of x, it's equal to, we differentiate f first, and then we keep g of x, and then we add it with, we keep f, all right? And we multiply by the derivative of g. So we'll just write down g prime of x like that. So here is the product rule. That's it. Okay, now we'll prove the quotient rule. In another word, we'll differentiate f of x over g of x. And just like in the previous examples, we'll first let y to be this right here, right? And for simplicity purpose, I will just write down f over g. We just have to remember, f and g, they are both functions of x. And before we differentiate, we will take the natural log on both sides. So ln here and ln here. On the left-hand side, we still have ln y. But on the right-hand side, we know that ln of a quotient is what? It's a difference of two lns. In another word, we can just write this down as ln of f and then minus ln g. And this is just the ln property, all right? And then we can look at this and do implicit differentiation. So I'll put this down d, dx like this. On the left-hand side, differentiating ln y with respect to x, we get 1 over y. But then be sure, be sure, we multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. Name the dy dx, okay? And then this is equal to, we differentiate ln f. This is going to be 1 over f, and you multiply by f prime, because f is a function of x as well, by the chain rule right here, all right? 
And likewise, similar right here, minus the derivative of ln g, which is 1 over g, times g prime. Then that's from the derivative of g, right? And this is what we have. Now, ju just we will multiply both sides by y. Let's put it down right here so they cancel. Do the same right here, multiply by y, right? This is the multiplication. On the left-hand side, this is exactly what we're trying to look for, dy dx. And on the right-hand side, this is equal to, we have y in blue, and we know y is equal to f over g. So let's put that down right here. And now, inside here, we have this, which is f prime over f, and then minus g prime over g, right? So this is what we have. It looks really nice. And what else can we do? Well, why don't we just distribute as usual, right? So if we do that, we see what? When we multiply this and that, the f cancel each other out. We will have f prime on the top over g on the bottom only for the first term, right? Once again, f and f cancel out. And then next, when we do this times that, first, let's write down the minus. Nothing was able to cancel out. We will just put down f times g prime, right? And then over g times g, which is g to the second power, like that. Okay, this is pretty much it, but you know this is how <laughs> this is not how the quotient rule looks like, right? Well, we have two fractions. Let's go ahead and get the common denominator and then just combine the terms, right? So right here I need to have g squared on the bottom as well. So let's multiply the bottom by g but the top by g as well, right? So finally, this is the dy dx. Let me just put this down, right? This is equal to, now the denominator, they both have g squared, so we can just put that down in the big fraction with g squared on the bottom. On the top, right here, let me put down the g first, okay? So I'll put down g right here times f prime, and then minus f times g prime because you know this is how the quotient rule looks like right so even though i put down f prime times g but this is the usual presentation of the quotient rule and that's pretty much it and now let me just put this down right here so we can end this properly ladies and gentlemen to differentiate a quotient what we do is on the bottom be sure you square the bottom function right so you do g of x and you square that. And then on the top, you first keep the bottom function, so we have g of x. And we multiply by the derivative of the top, namely f prime of x. And then we are going to subtract the top function, which is f of x, and then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. So that's g prime of x, like that. And this right here is the quotient rule. And that's it. Okay, here's the bonus. I will show you guys how to differentiate f of x raised to the g of x power. As we can see, the base is a function. Likewise, the power is also a function. In this case, how can we differentiate that? Well, we can still do what we have been doing, all right? First, we let y equal to that. But we know f and g are functions of x. And for simplicity purpose, I will just write down f to the g power like this and we will take the natural log on both sides. So ln this and ln that. On the left hand side, we'll just have ln y, and on the right hand side, you see g right here is the power. We can take the g to the front by one of the log properties, right? And this right here has nothing to do with the power rule in the derivative. This is just the innocent property of logarithm. Bring the power to the front, that's all, right? So we have g in the front times ln f, like this. And now we can look at this equation and do implicit differentiation. So we put on d dx to differentiate, right? On the left hand side, the derivative of ln y is going to be 1 over y, but then you multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dx, like this. On the right hand side, remember, g is also a function of x. This is the product of two functions now. So we have to use the product rule. And in fact, we did that already, isn't it? So 
product root in action. And this is the version that I would like to use. Let me keep the first function as how it is. So I will just write down g right here, and we'll differentiate the second function. The derivative of ln f is first 1 over f, but we multiply by the derivative of f, which is f prime, because f is a function of x. And then I will add the second function, which is ln f, and we multiply by the derivative of the first, which is just g prime, like that. And just like what we did, <laughs> we will just multiply both sides by y, so that this and that will be gone. And then we do the same thing right here as well. On the left-hand side, we have that dy dx that we are looking for. On the right-hand side, y in this case is f raised to the g power. So I'll just write it down, f to the g power like this. And then pretty much the rest inside, right here, right? We have g times 1 over f times f prime. Let me just put the g and f prime on the top. So we have g times f prime over the f on the bottom. And then for this, perhaps I can put down the g prime first, g prime times ln f, like this, right? And usually when we have something in front, we should distribute. But if you look at this right here, even though we distribute, nothing can cancel out nicely. I don't think if we distribute, we can end up with a better form. So I will just stop right here. It doesn't look impressive, but it is a formula, and it's pretty cool actually, right? It is not really nice, but this is the formula to differentiate a function to a function power. And let me just put this down over there to be legitimate. First, we will have f of x raised to the g of x power like that, all the way in the front. And then multiply by this part here. We will have g of x times f prime of x over f of x, right? And then we add this with g prime of x times ln of f of x, like this, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the formula to differentiate a function to a function power. That's it. So good.